The largest state in the nation is in a state of crisis right now. We need to do something to resolve the fact that California has gotten too large to govern with the government that it has. As a result, we affirm the following resolution. The California State Legislature should pass into law Initiative 1648, the division of California into six states. Before we move on, a brief amount of framework. First, the use of policy evaluated through net benefits ought to be the criterion for the debate today as it allows both teams access to predictable methods of bur or, sorry, predictable burdens and methods of refutation. Now, the plan of the affirmative. The California State Legislature should pass into law Initiative 1648, the division of California into six states. It's the resolution we just want to do exactly what we were told to do. Briefly, some solvency about what we will be splitting them into. Uh, there will be six states. Washington, Jefferson, Central California. Washington. Oh, according to the Washington Post. Sorry. <laughs> Jefferson. <laughs> that would be weird to Washington, right? Uh, according to the Washington Post, it would be Jefferson, Central California, Silicon Valley, Valley Western California, Northern California, and Southern, Southern California. Excellent. That's what we're talking about today. So now, the first advantage to doing this, that would be resolution of our infrastructure problems. The first advantage is infrastructure. My ASA point is the status quo. The first argument here is that all of California is facing a crisis with its hospitals, schools, roads, all of which are falling apart. The fundamental infrastructure underlying the basis of California is old and aging. The, furthermore, if you look to 2011, there were 5 million houses between the states of California and Arizona during the major blackout that lost power as a result of one switching station going into a crisis mode. This is a problem that we see pervasive throughout the energy industry in California, where blackouts are becoming more common as our energy infrastructure ages. According to the American Society of Civil Engineering, uh, report card, California's infrastructure was graded a C, meaning that we are on track for, or we need to be on track for replacement, however we aren't right now. Moreover, the average age of electrical transformers in California is 42 years old. However, they only have a service life of 30 to 35 years, means that we need to replace these immediately. And finally, the Caltrans inefficiency is, uh, was quoted by the Washington Post as being responsible for the problem with roads in California. The Caltrans is simply too large of an organization to be able to deal with the amount of problems that it's facing right now. Thus, the way that the plan will solve this are the links. The first argument here is that we are going to break apart California into more manageable chunks. Essentially, we're cutting up our food before we bite into it so we don't have to swallow the whole steak whole. The second argument here is that this will make the budget easier to manage because with smaller amounts of money and a government that is more uh, understanding of the problems that it's facing, it will be easier for them to assign money. The third argument here is that smaller states mean that the government will more directly see where the money needs to go because they will be closer to the problems that they are addressing. It's hard for Sacramento to be aware of problems throughout the state of California because it's so far from so many parts of California. Thus, this leads to the impacts. The first argument here is that the failing, in, uh, the failing infrastructure in California is poised to lead California into an economic decline. The best way that we can resolve this is to make California more manageable. The little a argument here is that infrastructure is key. This slows the economic velocity within the state and leads to losses that are irrecoverable. When the, state goes, or when the power goes out for businesses all across the south of California, they are no longer able to participate in business on days that they can't go back to once the power comes back on. If you're a manufacturing company in, the, in Southern California and you lose power for a week, you have forever lost that economic opportunity. The little b argument here is that this leads individuals into poverty. When there is lower economic activity, there's less money to be spread around for these individuals. This means that these individuals face a form of structural violence where they are forced to make choices between basic necessities like housing and food. This type of poverty is cyclical. Once these individuals fall into it, it is incredibly difficult for them to get out of this, part, of this cycle. Uh, now, the second advantage to doing this is ruralism. Ruralism. The ASA point is the status quo. 
the first argument here is that rural populations are ignored in policy considerations right now. Discourses are focused on cities where academia and politics happen. The majority of the literature that comes out is based around these two loci, and neither of these are located in rural areas, which causes considerable problems for the populations that live there. Rural California is struggling right now because progress does not, or sorry, programs do not target central California, where a majority of our rural populations live, nor do they target the northern California state that would be created. The next argument here is that individuals who live in rural areas are more likely to be socioeconomically disadvantaged. One in seven rural individuals in the United States lives below the poverty line. But moreover, rural poverty is worse than urban poverty because these individuals uh, have substandard housing where you will find dozens of individuals living in chicken coops so that they can be farm workers in rural areas where other housing doesn't exist and where housing developments haven't been created for those areas. But the little B argument here is that this poverty is invisible because you can't even get to many of these areas by paved roads. So it's literally nearly impossible to find these areas unless you are aware of them. But the next argument here is that rurbanism is a place-based type of discrimination that is not encompassed by classism, racism, or sexism. It is its own discrimination that exists against these individuals. Thus, the way that we change this are links. The first argument here is that we signal a unique appreciation for the difference in needs between the rural and the urban by separating them into their own states that will be able to appropriately address the problems that these groups are facing. The second argument is that this these changes must be based on a recognizance of their place-specific problems, and that the best way to do this is to give them their own government. The third argument here is that this gives authority and control over these regions to the people who live within these regions, rather than to Sacramento. The next argument are the impacts that come out of this. This is that the affirmative deconstructs the notion of the rural difference, that we break down the idea that rural populations are that different from urban populations. Rural is falsely constructed as opposite of urban. Where the city is dirty, the rural is clean. But and where the city is dangerous, the rural is safe. But we find these to be untrue, and that this creates otherization of these populations by recognizing them differently. The affirmative resolves this. <coughs> We're just going to be one new sheet of paper on top and then the rest of the case. All right, is everybody ready? I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Congratulations, but let's jump right into the debate. So, the first off is going to be a disadvantage. You can just go ahead and say decrease in college admittance. So the uniqueness points. The first is that uni uh, universities of California, also known as the UCs, have different costs for out-of-state tuition. In-state, it can cost anywhere from $12,000, such as UC Merced, to up to $30,000 in areas such as Berkeley, depending on where you're from. But the problem is, is that once it becomes out-of-state, that increases to over forty dollars to $50,000 because of the out-of-state tuition. The second, argument that we, the, B, uh, the second argument that we have is that the California grant, also known as the Cal Grant, funds thousands of students every year that are, dis, uh, that are disadvantaged economically, but also have proved that through in high school that they have a decent enough GPA to earn this. The UCs have the highest amount of Cal Grants, almost half of the tuition, if not more, depending on which UC you go to. This is only for California students, and the way that it works is that each high school in California applies for it, and then their students, if they qualify on a socioeconomic level and the GPA, then they qualify for the Cal Grant. The B point under here is that we pay, uh, the third point that we have under the uniqueness is that most students are relying on this, cannot afford school without it. The reason for that is because Stafford loans, which those come from the United States federal government, generally aren't enough to cover it because they max out around $8,000. When your school's a lot more than that, you can't take it out. Sure, if you qualify in your FAFSA with an ESC of zero, then your family, can, like, then they can approve you for the loans to go to a private bank, but then you need a co-signer. Most kids that, have, that receive these Cal Grants are not in a position to where they can have someone co-sign alone, generally because of the economic statuses. Ultimately, the argument under the uniqueness is that the Cal Grant and the UC system are the reasons why it's been so strong. The fourth and final uniqueness point is that the UCs are lead in research for STEM areas, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The little A under here is that UCs were created with the intent that the professors have to actually do research. Thus, the links. The first is that the plan separates the states, and now the UCs collapse because there's not going to be an actual system for them, because if you can't be within one state of California, there's no way to determine how it's going to work out. Thus, that leads us to the internal links. 
The first is that students now have to pay out-of-state tuition even if they did it before in certain areas. This is uniquely bad because one, it means that they can lose the Cal Grant, which is a lot of money for them because they're no longer a California resident because it doesn't exist anymore. But second, what this means is that you know, second, what this means is that they probably wouldn't be able to afford to go to the school because they wouldn't have enough to take out loans. The second argument of the internal links is that areas such as the Jefferson region in Northern California wouldn't have a UC in their state. So all the six regions that they label out, Jefferson region doesn't have a UC in there, even though there are nine that exist within the state of California. Ultimately, our argument is that students that live in areas like these won't be able to get accepted to any of the UCs because they're not within a state where a UC exists. The third point under the internal links is that students won't be able to afford to pay for this, which means that they're either going to, one, have to switch colleges, which is really difficult because they usually have to take off more time, especially when you come from a state school transferring somewhere else because all, not all of your units transfer. But the second reason why this is really bad is because debt is really bad. Now let's get into that. That's the implications. The first one's going to be that of poverty. So you can cross-apply a lot of the warrants that they were talking about, about why poverty is bad. Living one year in poverty decreases your lifespan about seven years and your lifespan expectancy, but ultimately poverty is really bad because it means that you can't provide the basic necessities. Not going to go into just everything. We all agree that poverty is really bad. So. The second impact scenario is that of STEM research. The first point that we have under here is that STEM is key to competition, and the reason for that is because it creates technology. It has innovation. We think that innovation is uniquely good, specifically within the state of California, because that's what is allowable for keeping selling new products and keeping the economy high. That's the reason why the UC system is so strong and why California has more um, universities than any other state. With that said, let's jump onto let's jump onto cases and sort of start from the top, and we'll go down a couple of reasons why. As you turn. So on to advantage one when they talk about infrastructure. So the first point when they say that California is facing a crisis and it's falling apart right now. My first response to this is turn. That by fiat six the separation of six states, they're not going to, these different departments aren't going to have enough of in, infrastructure that's established or government that's established in each state in order to make these problems in order to solve for these problems. The little A under here is that LA, Los Angeles, was specifically concerned about this because a lot of their ties that they have with different companies that come that are not like that are within California right now, but that are, would be in different states that were happening post plan. Therefore, um, so we can see that the turn is that it's just going to make it a lot harder for them. Drop down to the link level where they say that it's going to be in more manageable areas and the budget is easier to manage. They talk a lot about the impacts in areas when they go into these rural regions, specifically in Central California. The argument against the turn is that I'm going to say that the uniqueness overwhelms the link with what's going on in the status quo. If these individuals in these areas are so poor, they are not going to have enough money when you separate the states for the governments to do anything for them. They're going to come up here in the MG and start arguing about how, oh, it's not just a rural state, it's going to have some urban parts to it. Our argument is that if they haven't done anything now, it's probably going to be even harder when you decrease their budget because you make most of California separate. So that's where you're going to see that the uniqueness overwhelms the links and they're not going to have any, they're not going to be able to solve for their impacts. Now let's go on to the impacts. When they, they talk a lot about infrastructure, the argument that we're, gonna, we're making is not that infrastructure is bad, but it's they're going to lose on a time frame deficit because infrastructure takes a lot of time. Second of all, you can also cross apply this argument to the uniqueness overwhelms the link because what we're seeing here is that it's really expensive to build infrastructure. Therefore, the idea that they're going for is more long term, but we think that this is really bad, especially when you divide it into six different states and that instantly puts people into poverty and causes a lot of people to drop out of school. We think that this is worse overall in the long run, even though we should do something about infrastructure. We just think that this isn't the way to do it. On to advantage two. So I want you to drop down to the link level. The first area, I'm going to put a turn here. So the first part over here is that Central Valley will become the poorest state in the country, which if we were to pass plan. This has been proven. They also even cross apply their warrants for this when they're saying that the rural areas, specifically in Central California, thus that would prove that this would be the poorest state in the United States. We think that this is really bad because that leads us to direct impacts of poverty. That means that Central California now has to help all of the people that are in there. That means that they don't have the rest of the money to start helping out those people. But the second reason why this is really bad is for that of agriculture. We can see that when you start to separate it, it's a California legislature law that puts these limits on what types of fertilizers California, Bakersfield and Fresno are able to use. But the problem is, is that Bakersfield and Fresno don't want to use the ones that the state is recommending them, that is requiring them to use. They want to use others that have nitrogen 
gas in them, which is really bad because it starts to run off and erode into the drinking water. We can look to areas such as the Kern River, which is the most dangerous and one of the largest rivers in the state of California, specifically in the Kern County region, which includes Bakersfield. What we're going to see that happens there is there's not going to be enough to salt back for it. Because we use this for drinking water, which means that when you run off into it, that means that those chemicals that are coming from that enter your body. This is uniquely bad when the World Health Organization states that 80% of all sickness and disease in the world is, generally, is caused by um, access, not, no access to clean water. The second argument that I want you to drop down, the last argument that I want you to drop down to, is just going to be the uh, impact level when they say they break down the difference between rural and urban. The argument that I want to make here is that this isn't going to be a reason to vote for the affirmative at the end of the debate. They've educated us on here, but they're not going to move at the critical, uh, the critical impact about how they just discuss the differences between the two when you're not actually going to solve it. Okay, so, and then drop back to the impacts of poverty. I guess you can put this back on the disadvantage. Um, so poverty is uniquely bad because... Oh, on that turn, sorry. I, I, yeah. So the impact of the turn to poverty, poverty is uniquely bad because it leads to forms of otherization. This is true because as we can see within the status quo, there's a separation that already exists. This is uniquely bad because we can just cross apply the instances of that. As more people enter into poverty, it's going to be the same dynamic of where we just ignore them like we are right now in the status quo. And as far as those reasons, Caleb and I urge negative vote. Thank you. is currently collapsing and how we need to take a radical new approach not only to redesigning a lot of these problems but also in order to generate new revenue in order to allow for the for the resolving of many of these issues most of the arguments that the negative has given you do not interact with this discussion and not only by having a radical a radical reshifting of our policies and only by allowing for the general new infrastructure that can address specific areas within California are we ever going to be able to resolve many of these issues of the loss of energy and the loss of economic opportunities and which are uniquely key for this debate. Looking to some of the specific arguments that the negatives make. The first argument that they make is that the departments aren't going to have enough money in order to be able to fund this because they're going to be split up. The first argument is that you can look to the fact that many groups within these within these areas are ready to go. Sit, uh, this new state of Jefferson, those who are advocating for it, say that they have the ability. They have the ability. They have they have those individuals who are ready to take the reins and get the laws going to make the new policies in order to have this implemented. Means that there is no there would not be any uh, lack of lack of time trade up I guess between these different problems. But initially, second, you can look to the fact that the new states will allow for specific addressing of these industries that will generate more revenue. You can look to the fact that the state of uh, the Silicon Valley can create new policies that will directly address things like the, the technology industry, that will generate new revenue. This will allow for more money overall to help resolve these, these infrastructure problems. That it will create more money and more tax tax dollars to help fund these, in, these uh, specific government agencies that will provide and allow for the construction of this infrastructure. But the next argument they make here is that the infrastructure is expensive, and that's exactly the problem. Is that currently the state of California is so large, the policies that are being implemented just are not, uh, they do not address the specific areas that it, to effectively govern the region. Which means that only by, al by allowing the area to be split up, only by allowing for these new policies to be enacted that will generate more revenue, can we actually get the money to create this infrastructure. Which means that if you look to the impacts that we discussed coming off of this, of the, of the, lack of, the loss of economic opportunity, and that this uniquely creates poverty within the state of California, because if you don't have energy, you, you can't go to your job, you lose access to heating, all of these different problems that are associated with, 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 with poverty, we say that this is a form of structural violence that ultimately you should be evaluated before anything else that they, of their discussion. But let's look to our advantage to about rural. The thesis of this advantage is that, there are, is that there is a split between urban populations, those individuals in the city, those individuals in Sacramento and Los Angeles, and those individuals that are in rural counties, that these have, they have different approaches and different, uh, different policies and different problems. 
the state of California, so large, so focused in, in Sacramento, just is incapable of dealing with these place-specific issues. And that uniquely separating states and allowing for and allowing for different populations to govern themselves is uniquely key to uniquely key for resolving these problems. But looking to some of the specific arguments they make, the first argument they make is that the uniqueness of, is that the uniqueness of the link, be, uh, and I think this I may have gotten a little mixed up here on my flowing, but they say that there's already being money lost. We say that we've already responded to this argument that only by allowing for the specific industries to be recreated and to be addressed through those individual states. Are we able to create the money to allow for to allow for this? Additionally, you can look to the fact that urban public, urban voters tend not to want to vote for rural programs. That they think it's something that's not going to affect them, and they don't want to pay for it. This means that rural populations are able to to vote for themselves and govern themselves, but likely have tax policies that will resolve their individual issues. But additionally, the next argument they make here is that I will take your question at the bottom if I have time. The next argument they make here is that the Central Valley would be one of the poorest states in the United States. Uh, and that is somewhat true in one viewpoint. However, you can look at the fact that according to the to the IRS, the, the Internal Revenue Service? Yes. I don't know. It's all over. It's all over. Uh, so the, the IRS says that the, the per capita per capita gross income would be thirty-three thousand per individual, which is substantially above both is substantially above the poverty line. And, uh, would, and we still look to the fact that this would allow for more for new different types of policies that would allow for to, to grow the economy overall. Which means that even if they start off somewhat uh, somewhat worse off in certain areas, overall it would be better. The next argument they make here is about agriculture and the loss of certain uh, certain laws that are protecting the environment such as fertilizers. But this argument just doesn't make sense. You look to the fact that the federal EPA has grant, has met, has uh, regulations that stop things like usage of these certain fertilizers, you can look to the fact that this argument just does not, uh, does not make sense. That even if the uh, Bakersfield or different areas would want to use different fertilizers, that's why we have a federal government to protect the environment and prevent that. Which means that you should be evaluating, our, which means you should evaluate the advantage above anything else. That this form of place-based discrimination, this substantial effect against the rural population, is creating worse poverty, is creating worse solarization and violence against these individuals. That ultimately you should evaluate and, and prefer through your ballot. Good. On the disadvantage, we have a couple of responses to, uh, to the disadvantage. The first argument is that there's no link. Is that you can look to the fact that similar that different states are red, right? You can look to the, to the nation already that similar states, especially in certain regions, tend to have agreements between each other that will allow for a student from one state to have, to get in-state tuition from another state. You can look to the fact that Nevada uh, has, Nevada has has agreements with Arizona, Oregon, and even California. That's how my friend Jacob here, who's from is from Sonoma County, is able to come come to Nevada on in-state tuition. Additionally, you can look to the fact that this means that, yes, while California may be split up and, there's, and the UCs will be in different areas, it would be very likely that, they, that these states would cooperate on their education system, especially since they have such a tradition uh, and within the UC system. Next argument you make here is that this would probably it would be a turn, that likely the UCs would then have to reevaluate their tuition costs if they, if they were suddenly split up. We say that the, that the UC system is is based on its overall effectiveness, which means that those individual states, those individual colleges, would likely have to change how they address things like tuition, which would likely probably bring those costs down in order to in order to accommodate new students and to attract more uh, new students. Additionally, it looks at that that the states are split up. I'm sorry, I don't have time for your question. But uh, that, that having this split up means means that the individual colleges will have to take new policies to be more competitive. To attract new st new students from out of state, which means that overall it will bring costs down. Additionally, you can look to the argument that uh, oh, that it's easier for a student to get into an out of state an out of state college than it is for an in state. That oftentimes these policies from the UC system and from different colleges are geared towards getting students from out of state, and that oftentimes the requirements for an in state for an in state student is often so much higher than those of uh, than those of out of state student. Which means that when we have this split up when, and the different states, it will mean that those individual colleges will be able to bring in out of state students easier. Which means ultimately it will be easier for a student from Jefferson to get into a student uh, to get into a college in Silicon Valley. Which means ultimately it will be better for these individuals. It will bring their costs down. Additionally, they make the argument that Jefferson won't have a UC, but I mean, new colleges can be started. You can you can start you can create a, a new educational institution that would be better geared. Ultimately, is this another argument for helping for helping the state for switching up for separating the states because it will allow for new educational opportunities to be addressed. 
And thus, given all these facts, I believe that you should vote in favor of the affirmation of that. Like, it's still almost impossible to get a job. 
but also they do nothing to the impact level, which means we're still gaining full access to poverty as well as stem, but I'll weigh that in one advantage too. Now let's move on to the advantage one. First of all, our argument that, 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 was, that was offensive, talking about how uh, they would never work and that the energy crisis, like the energy crisis that we're having right now, if we were to split the state into six different entities, would never work. They talk about how many groups are ready to go and ready to start funding right now, and they isolate Jefferson specifically as already having an apartment ready to go. First of all, this does not account, this does not account for the, the poorer areas in California, like Central Valley, that does not have it, and also they only isolate one area that has an apartment ready to go, which means there's still five areas right now that would have to completely start up new industries and if we have to start up new departments and gain all that information which means there would still be a massive time trade time trade-off than just doing it now because right now whether or not you like the California Department of Transportation or, uh, or, or the organizations that they have like right now the infrastructure is there to get projects done even if they are slow if you were to split it up into six different sections all of a sudden that infrastructure is not there at all for five of the states and only Jefferson has the ability to respond which means areas like Los Angeles, areas like San Diego, Sacramento, these massive areas, specifically Southern California, which is the ones that they isolated under 1AC, don't have the infrastructure to actually respond to the infrastructure crises that they're having right now, which means the status quo solves better for this, and this actually functions as a term because they actually slow the progress on infrastructure by splitting it into six states. Um, and basically, the only other thing that we're going to go for here is... Um, The fact that that matter, we're going to get access to their impacts because like, we have better have an ability to solve the infrastructure crisis by representing the status quo than what they're advocating for. Now it's going to advantage you. Go down to the Central Valley turn. They do not do near as much good. They do not do good enough work on this whatsoever. First of all, they talk about how it's only somewhat true because the IRS reports that 33% the average household income is 33,000 per individual. First of all, the statistic is based specifically off Bakersfield, and the reason that the average is so high in Bakersfield is because there's a lot of oil jobs. But when you look to Central California as a whole, the GDP would be even lower than Mississippi and Alabama, making it the poorest state in the 50 states. And this is inherently bad. And first of all, because because of poverty, when you look at this, like, and you look and you make it their own state, with the, 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 the board specifically talk about how the social pro the social projects in the area would drain um, education budgets, meaning that the per pupil uh, the per pupil education funds drops dramatically, which creates another cycle of poverty because all of a sudden high schools in Central Valley completely dry up, and this is inherently bad for poverty. But then also when we're talking about um, agriculture, they say that the FDA has regulations for a reason. First of all, FDA has not banned um, nitrogen yet; that's still like in the process of happening and probably actually won't happen because that's just how the FDA operates. But also what you're seeing here is now that the fact that they have to generate revenue to maintain education funds, they increase the impetus of using things like nitrogen and fertilizer because they need to increase crop yields because of this idea that like they're an agrarian society and they need to increase crop yields so they can make more money and actually pay for education. And because of this, they actually increase the, the impetus to use things like nitrogen-based fertilizers so they can sell more crops and pollute more water, and that's detrimental and used price. And across the, um, the analysis of that my partner gave about how 80% of sickness comes from dirty water that goes conceded. But then also the straight turns otherization of the difference between rural and urban because at the point that this poor state in America and now the poor state coming out of California is the rural state, now all of a sudden urban areas are just looking at it as those poor country bumpkins, and that like extends otherization even farther.
So there are only a couple of different arguments that we need to go for here. It's not necessarily that you have to buy every single argument as if it's going to happen 100% of the time, but ultimately look that we're mitigating their solvency for this, which increases the propensity of the disset. Specifically, I want you to drop down to the first term that we put on the uniqueness, which was that six states need, they have different departments and they're not ready yet. The only thing that they're saying is that many groups are ready to go and they isolate Jefferson. The problem with that is Caleb gave you too, many, too much analysis about how different areas are not ready to go. I said this such as Los Angeles was curious, like, was skeptical about this plan happening from the beginning. These are things that were conceded, which is why even if there is going to be something good in the long run, they can't prove to you why it's going to be good once you sign the ballot, which means that in a state of crisis, you should probably prefer the most probable thing, which is that we're going to leave, that they're going to put more people into poverty once you pass a plan. But the second turn that I want you to go down to is the one that Caleb put on in the MO, is saying that we don't have this infrastructure now, but that it's in the process, which means that by the separation, you only halt that further. You slow it down because the plans that are in process now have to separate. It's no longer California building a road in San Francisco, but it's, the, it's Northern California region. Ultimately, we think that this is a unique reason why you're not going to be voting for Advantage 1, especially when they talk about how infrastructure is key and all these benefits from it and how it's going to alleviate people from poverty. Ultimately, even if you buy this, it won't happen for a long time. On to Advantage 2. Only a couple of different arguments we need here, and that's going to be the turn and the time frame on the impact level. On the turn. The only argument that they put here is that the IRS says that, the, that there's going to be an increase of 33000 a year. Extend across Caleb's argument when he was talking to you about how Bakersfield, all the people in Bakersfield make a lot of money already because of like the infrastructure, because of the oil company that's there. Ultimately, you're saying that the GDP is going to be lower because, of this, like, because the states are going to be uh, deep, it's going to be the poorest state. I also want you to extend across Caleb's turn about otherization. This is critical because on Advantage 2, their impact is otherization. Caleb turns his back by saying that you've isolated a rural region. You said it's Central California. But then you come up here and say that all of a sudden, people who are urban are going to want to help, even though there's dichotomy that exists right now. But then we think that this leads to a greater disparity of otherization because you're creating states that have more rural individuals than others. That means it's not just going to be an area now. It's going to be a, that's a poor state, that's a rural state. We don't want to work with them. The second argument on to the impact level, which when they say it's just going to be that we're going to be winning on the time frame level, they say that they break down the difference between rural and urban. It just perpetuates otherization further. So even if they don't break it down, they just discuss what was going on in the status quo. The real reason why you're going to be voting here for NEG is the dissat. The time the reason why is because new schools take a long time and a lot of money to start up. This is old, this is uniquely bad when all of their arguments are talking about how it's going to create better schools in the long run, or about how UCs can somewhat interact with each other. This ignores the specific analysis of one how you're going to get rid of the Cal Grant. Any analysis on this is new in the PMR, and I'll point of order it because it didn't get attacked in the MG. That means that we gain access to poverty uniquely because you you lose a, you force students to lose a lot of money up to twelve thousand dollars if they go to a UC. But the second Second reason why is just be simply for the fact that UCs don't allow you to pay in-state tuition if you're not a California citizen. It is for those reasons that we think that now is not the time to act. Thank you. California is facing. With no propensity for California to get any better at this point in time, the best thing that we can do is take action with the hope that we will be able to resolve these issues. They raise some very legitimate points. This may not be the smoothest, easiest transition that has ever happened in the world, but at this point, California is already going downhill and doing so quickly. So the best thing that we can do is act now in order to stave off these problems. Now, to address their specific arguments, starting at the disadvantage. The first argument that I would like to examine is their argument about uh, Jefferson not neighboring San Diego, and so these students won't be able to get Western undergraduate exchange rates. That's simply untrue. In Nevada, we offer Washington students and Oregon students Western undergraduate exchange rates, despite the fact that we don't share a border. It's a regional basis, not a border sharing basis. That's how undergraduate exchange systems work on the West Coast. So there's no propensity for this issue to get worse. But then their second argument 
is uh, in response to, uh, Corey makes the argument that UCs will have to reevaluate the tuition cost, and their only argument is that this isn't typicals of the UCs, typical of the UCs. However, under their explanation that the UCs will now be broken up, they ignore Corey's argument that the UCs now need to compete with one another for students, and that as a result of competition, prices will be driven down. This is a fundamental of economics, that when two organizations compete with one another, that the prices get cheaper in order to better attract customers. That is exactly what's happening here, and they fail to respond to that argumentation. But then further, when we talk about how it's easier for out-of-state students to get admitted, all that they reference is transfer students to UCs. I was once a transfer student applying to UCs, and let me tell you that for freshman admits, it's far easier if you're out-of-state, because remember, they get a little more money for you, so they're more keen to let in an out-of-state student who's likely to throw them a few more dollars. That's what my opponents are failing to recognize here. And then the last important argument that they make on this sheet is that building up a reputation takes time, that UC couldn't start overnight. But remember UC Merced, who started in 2008 and already has a pretty good reputation? They're already sending graduates into places of employment who are doing great things for the world. Maybe they don't have the reputation of UCLA, but the graduates are still doing great things. So their argumentation simply falls flat on its face here. Now I'd like to talk about the advantage. They only make two responses to our first advantage about infrastructure coming out of their most recent speeches. The first argument that they make is that we're still not accounting for Central California. However, they are ignoring the fact that we say from my very first speech, which is that the infrastructure already doesn't exist there. The roads are falling apart. Sacramento doesn't recognize their needs. They don't have enough hospitals, and their schools are underfunded. This is what's happening today. They're trying to scare you with the situation that already exists. The best that we can do is take action to resolve this. But then the second argument that they make is that large areas like Los Angeles and San Diego won't be able to transition. However, Los Angeles alone, the metropolitan area, has 15 million people. They have one of the largest regional governments in the world. This probably shows that large Remember, areas like this... The analysis about Los Angeles having all these people to do this argument wasn't made in the MO, it's made in the LOC and not responded to in the MGA. I don't have it anywhere out of the LOC shell. I only have Keith, sorry, Keith, right? Caleb. Caleb, I'm sorry. Caleb making the argument that Los Angeles and San Diego won't be able to make the transition. I have your argument as Al Lay's concern about companies. That's a pan. I'm sure they all will figure that out every time. But regardless of whether or not that argumentation was new, they're still not responding to the arguments that come out of the very first speech of this debate, which is that California's infrastructure is failing. When they don't address that, doing nothing gives us no hope at a better future. They haven't described why what is happening right now will resolve this. The only opportunity to improve this situation is coming from the affirmative. Now, on advantage two, there are a couple of important arguments that I want to address here. The first argument that they make is in response to Corey's argument that Jefferson or sorry, that uh, Central California would actually still have a per capita income of 33000 which is competitive with the national average for a state. Their only response is that this is based off of Bakersfield. However, if you read the article in The Economist where they pull the IRS data to come, at the, come to this number, it's not purely based off of Bakersfield. It's a sampling of the cities that exist in Central California. The context-specific literature here says that Central California, while it wouldn't be as wealthy as Silicon Valley, First of all, already isn't as wealthy as Silicon Valley. That's no surprise to anyone. But second of all, would have enough wealth to resolve its own problems. $33,000 per capita is competitive within the United States. These individuals will be able to provide for themselves. But now, the next argument that they make is that the, the, about the nitrogen-based fertilizers. But once again, the EPA regulates the amount of runoff that is acceptable from farms, means that this probably isn't a concern. So what we see is that on Advantage 2, we need to vote to rectify the issues of ruralism by granting rural populations self-governance. The only opposition that my opponents have offered is some concern about college admittance, and that is never going to outweigh the poverty and ruralism that exists in the United States.